The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this 19th day of September. Goodness, how September is just flying by. And September is usually kind of, uh, I, I told subscribers, expect September to be extremely volatile month. It doesn't matter how much uh, down we go because there's a lot, there are a lot of support levels, but it's just that each we might be looking at lower highs and lower lows for, for a while. We've seen that, and I think we're getting really close to some kind of a bounce, a, a bounce that isn't just, uh, let me put it this way, it isn't just a bounce that lasts two or three days. It's a bounce that actually has some legs to it. Um, but we have, I, I don't think we've got there yet. We're attempting to get there. So let me just run the numbers. Look, the Dow is down 66 at 30,755. You know, the technique I use, this is, in fact, let me just draw it in here so that you can see it in a, in a very different light. So we'll grab that. That's the daily chart. I'll extend that out. So there's a pattern that I always talk about, and it's really uh, making higher lows and much higher highs, and then eventually it turns down. So it's like a falling axe, but the opposite direction. So I'll just draw this in to give you some sense of what I'm looking at here. I'm going to make this blue just for now, and then I want to get rid of it because I don't like to have too many lines. Here we go. So this is going to be blue. And I'll make it a little thicker because it's just here's a temporary thing. So there it is, thicker. And we'll go to this one right here, and we'll call this, just for the moment, Chapway Falling Axe Formation Support Level. And what does it do? I also make that thicker. I'm going to have to change that as well. So this is the pattern. I had noticed a long time ago, way back when I, I was hand charting, uh, that there was a pattern where the price ran up, ran up. It sometimes went to a D, E, or F. That's the fourth, fifth, high, fifth or sixth highest peak. And then it started to make lower highs and much lower lows. And then it found a base for whatever reason. And all of a sudden, that very negative expanding cone formation started to look like it could make a V or a cup formation where there are higher prices. And if it takes out that resistance line, the upper trend line, falling trend line, it could have a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. Well, it turns out over the years that that is a pattern that is also replicated in the exact same way, upside down. After all, chart patterns are merely a repetition of a fractal, we could say, of a pattern. And it doesn't matter the time frame because it's human emotion. And that gets repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over again. And you've got to recognize it. And if you do recognize it, you find that it is uh, happens on the positive side, happens on the negative side. So I just took the slide and I turned it upside down. Even the words are upside down. And what happens is the price comes down sharply. Let me just move this to this side so you can see. Let me have a look at Tiger, Tiger TV. Yep, there it is. And make a low and then start to make higher lows. <clears throat> but much higher highs. So it's the exact inversion of the one that we were looking at before. And that says, at a certain point, usually in the Chapman Wave H pattern, I have to mix this up because you have to understand that I'm really only looking at three patterns. Look, there it is. Straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, and how they combine. And in this case, combine of uh, red, where it is down sharply and then rallies and fails, usually at a peak A or a B, that says watch out if you take out that left side low. But if, in fact, you are able to do something like this and rally very sharply in this particular pattern and go not to a peak A or a B, but you go all the way to a C, D, or even an E, and in this case an F, it says you've usurped some of the strength by going higher, not that much higher, but higher, but it also means you've activated 
and release some of the downside energy so that when the downside comes, that trend line, this trend line right here, becomes extremely important. And it should hold. And what, 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 what happened in this particular case from 34,281, back on the 16th of uh, August, it pulled back to 31,182, very beginning of September, and then tried to bounce. So the rule of thumb for me is at a peak A or a peak B in the arch formation, this is the one right here. A failure says, watch out, you could really take out that left side low. But when it goes higher than a peak C to a DE, or in this case an F, you've used up a lot of upside energy. And at the same time, you've used up a lot of downside energy so that finally when you come down, how you hold this left side <clears throat> trend line, rising trend line, is going to be very important. So let's go back to the real story. And the real story is, and the reason why I said I, th I thought I wanted to actually go long this morning, and then I thought this time if I'm wrong, this the, the the Dow moves up 200 points from the low today. That's okay. We've still got to go through Wednesday. There could be a lot of choppiness between now and then. So the most important thing that I'm looking at right now is <clears throat> I'm going to make that thin again, back to thin, and yeah, just leave it like that. So what we've done, you see, we haven't gone to the 29.653 June low. That's going to be really important. A break of that says, aha, something else is different because now you have to look at weekly and monthly time frame. So at this particular point, the stretch to the downside, let me just have a cup of tea. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. So what it says is this entire resistance area in the 31,270s, <coughs> about four, 500 points up from here, that's going to be the big test. That's also the line period exponential moving average in the daily chart of the Dow. All right, enough with this. So what I'm saying is we are under pressure, very short. Oh, okay, well, Dow just went, Dow just went positive, up 23 at, uh, and the S&P is unchanged. And I should have done this right at the very beginning. I wanted to do it. I think I did this so that uh, people in the den could see it. And uh, <coughs> oh, I don't want to be coughing right now. So now we've got a leg D in the 10-minute chart. Look, there it is. Leg D, Chapman Wave. A buy signal going to a buy mode. It says it should go to at least a D. It's gone to above 238.2. Uh, 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 and now we're looking at the two... 61.8 target in the extension for the, uh, the chart. Oh, talking about extensions. Tomorrow, Larry Pesavento does his uh, online, uh, does his real-time workshop, all-day workshop. It should be a fabulous workshop. Uh, highly recommended. I think everybody would recommend it. And uh, he just demonstrates all the techniques that he's developed over the years, many, not, uh, not years, decades. And I, I wonder how many trades he's always put on uh, in his life. Anyway, it should be a fantastic webinar. Check out the front page of TFNL. So as I'm looking at it right now, Dow's up 13, and we'll come back and we'll finish up with all these different indices, and we'll look at some stuff that I've got to press. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, I'm just finishing out a request in the den if I could just post Netflix, Netflix, NFLX uh, online videos. 241.41, uh, up $1.39. <clears throat> Leg D under the previous D, and that's it. Just be a little careful. So we've had three peak Ds. Uh, sorry, two peak Ds and one leg D. Uh, the previous one went all the way to uh, 253, 250, uh, 251.99 on the 15th of August. Dropped down to about 215. That's now 245. That's some 30 points higher. Uh, yes. And the weekly chart says that technically I should put an up arrow, which I've done from the trough E. <coughs> oh, I thought I'd resolve this. Let me just drink this. Nothing like listening to coughing, right? I mean, is that what you want? No, it's not what I want. So Netflix is acting quite well. This horrible candle, it's going to take so much to get rid of this horrible candle. Uh, that was that, the earnings and everything else that came out of the April, the week of the 22nd, has a, opens a 340 round number, has a high of 351.68, has a low of 210.05 and closes at 215. I would say that's an ugly candle. So it's trying to get, if we can get into halfway of this candle at any point in the next uh, two, three weeks, and that would be at about 280. Wow, 40 points higher. Well, yeah, if we can get there, that's going to be a big positive. In the very short term, and the monthly doesn't look very good at all, but in the very short term, it looks like it's got stabilization. Oh, all of these stocks, if they can just find stabilization, that is a big thing. Some of them have a stabilization in oh, some of them almost all year. Uh, but in this case, the low that was made way back in uh, April or May, with an H pattern, with a successful U-shape pattern, says that Netflix is in play, maybe more as a trade than anything else. Unlike, uh, say, an Amazon, oops, typed it in the wrong place. Unlike an Amazon, is the big, uh, big four, five caps that we're looking at from the Nasdaq area, which keeps had a really good rally at that peak D. How many peak Ds have we seen around about August the 15th at about 145? 
trading now, now uh, off the legs, a D that was made on Friday, maybe a peak D today. I think, I think by Friday, I'm going to have a good sense of whether or not Amazon can have its first entry point. Real, and we we talked about it as just a, an experimental tiptoe in, just a fraction to get a, a sense of the stock. If you want to own it, just to, to at least be part of it in this particular move, so, and that goes back about three weeks or so. Uh, it was in the 133, 134 area, um, and yeah, here we are at 123. So all I can say is that Amazon, I haven't got the extra move yet that I think is the one that starts the the entry point for your position on the long term. For those of you who aren't in it, that was a question for me for the last couple of weeks for a lot of for a lot of people. But I think we're getting to a point where I'll get that information. So it's filled in that big gap to the downside. Uh, it, it went on the down... The gap, the gap up back in August or going into August has been filled. Now, how do we come out of it? We've got a gap from uh, Thursday into Friday, and now Monday still hasn't filled the gap. This is very important. So that's Amazon. Apple's the other one I was asked about. I said to get to the very beginning of the week. This is leg D it's sitting right on a support level. Now, these support levels, I think, are different by usual. Yeah, these are the ones that were uh, recommended to me a while back, and this went right to that very level. Very, uh, bravo, i got to say, that was very accurate. And I had the trend line sitting there at 148, and we were at 150. We'll see how that 148 lasts, because on a weekly and monthly basis, although it's digesting gains and not showing strength, is also at this particular point not showing uh, persistent weakness. It has been weak for four or five weeks, but that's a little different to uh, because it ran all the way to the Chapman Wave inside track repellers and it had that kind of strength. It says that there's still internal strength. So watching Apple closely, what would be the other one? Let's go to Meta. Oh, I don't know if I've even looked at Meta for a while. I just dismissed it completely. Meta, which is the old Facebook. I, I went through this the other day. I said, what is it with these companies? Oh, I, I wrote it. Oh, someone, that's right. <laughs> Interesting story. Um, I have a dear friend whose daughter-in-law his son was, was working in companies in San Francisco and did very, very well. And then a company in England uh, heard about him and wanted him and hired him and they sent the whole took the whole family over, etc. He's doing very well. Well, his wife, who used to work for one of those uh, one of those big companies out on the west coast, and then uh, I guess resigned because they were going to go overseas, was then offered a job with with one of the companies <laughs> that we always talk about here. Uh, but to do the European uh, organization, uh, sa sa sales, etc. And um, she's been doing that for a little while, doing very, very well. And uh, he asked me the other day about the, uh, he just mentioned it. So I said, oh, this is one of those companies, you know, like, like Apple, uh, not Apple, like uh, uh, Facebook changed its name to Meta. <coughs> Google changed its name to Alphabet. And I keep the, uh, um, what's the, Square changed its name to Block. I said, yeah, it just, it's such a shame that they did that. They should have just stuck with the names. Those names are already part of the vernacular. Now they, whenever anybody says the name, the new name, they say, they refer it with, you. Know, they say Alphabet, the former Google, or uh, Meta, the which is Facebook. So why bother? I mean, anyway. okay. So let's just get that out the way. So Meta's in that category. And look at that, a horrible, horrible chart. Leg D in the monthly chart, 384.33. Uh, high back in 2021 at a 145 right now. I would call that a little bit of a dip. All right. So in order for the QQQ, the NDX 100, to really change uh, the, the tide, in the daily chart, which will then help the weekly chart, and which will then help the monthly chart, there has to be a rally at some point going into the fall. Maybe it falls too soon. Maybe going into 
third week of October, let's say, where the QQQ, the NDX 100 trading vehicle, that's the Invesco Trust Series, is trading not in the 280s, 260s, 250s, but actually is above the 322, 200 period exponential moving average trading, <clears throat> tackling the recent high of August of 334, and then using that entire area of 320 as a support level to break for a whole two to three weeks into the 340s. And at that point, we're looking at something very, very different. At that point, we're looking at all the resistances uh, having been pierced, the key resistance on the short to intermediate term, and that'll be a big positive. Thousand fourteen, I'll be right back. That's a chapter type. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, everyone, we're back. And the Dow's up 29, s and down to 1. So we've got a leg F to the downside of the QQQ. Everything, everything about it, and this is what I showed my subscribers yesterday when I did the overview, weekly overview, a video. Um, we're, there's no question that this W formation says we're very close to some kind of a, a bounce attempt, and the bounce attempt <coughs> will pick up legs. I don't know why this keeps scratchy, scratchy like that. Uh, um, but what's really important is that we probably will see choppy, choppy until Wednesday. Does it Wednesday, will they announce something that really says, oh, great, now we know what's going on? I'm not sure they can. In fact, it's even more mixed than ever before. But you never know how the market perceives. Remember, it's perception. 
It's the way the market reacts is the only thing that counts. I don't care what the market is told. It's how it reacts to what, it's, what, it, what it perceives. And that's all. And as, as far as I'm concerned, I'd say to subscribers, probably the next 300 points up or down at the beginning of this week is going to tell us a lot about where we go for the rest of September. And just let's keep it as simple as that. Now, within the context of uh, QQQ, I just wanted to show you this here. Look, the IWM is now down 40 cents at 178.59. So at any moment, it looks good. And we've seen that in the relationship of gold. <clears throat> Look, gold down, now it's down 7. It was down 10 before. And the relationship of gold to silver. Look at the silver chart. The silver chart is way superior to the gold chart. It doesn't always do that and hold it for long, but it does do that periodically. And what we're looking at here, you've got a Chapway falling axe formation. Right there. Low high lows and lower low highs, much lower lows. And if silver by Wednesday afternoon or Thursday can be trading at 20.25, something nicely above that high that was made on the 19th of September of 20.005. That'll be a big deal. That'll say, independent of the dollar, which is holding very nicely, up 33 ticks at 110.02, up near the, the all-time high, or at least multi-decade highs. You've got the EUR, USD, at <clears throat> towards the lows, Underneath the pink, look at this, the pink nine period moving and the weekly chart, look at this, since the, since the euro went negative in the weekly chart, the nine went under the 14 period moving average back in, I think it was June, yep, yeah, June 25th, week of 25th of June 2021, in the 1.98 area. <coughs> this is not good. It's not good to have a program <clears throat> and keep coughing through the program. I thought I was uh, getting better, but I guess uh, the voice needs a little more time. So we're looking at the euro very weak. And look at the USDJPY. This is the yen holding the other highs. I'd show you your left side, right side, a match, vertical match, where the MACD was still strong back around about the September the 6th, 7th <clears throat> at the high. 144.90-ish, and then the retest of the high at 144, right there, uh, 144.95, just under the previous high on the 14th of September, you saw the MACD still, still strong, but turning down a little bit. Stochastic was much weaker. Relative strength was weakening. And yet the price is held well. So leadership remains, meaning leadership of the Dow, leadership of the uh, yen. <clears throat> and that is really putting some kind of a, a handicap on the upside for the market itself. A couple of things I want to look at here that I was asked about, and I'll do it right this minute. And that is, <coughs> in the um, IBB, which is the NASDAQ biotech area, I've been mentioning how the, 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 the large cap, this is the NASDAQ biotech, is so different to what I'm seeing in the micro caps in the uh, biotech area or the labs, anything to do with the, the uh, biotechs. And you have to separate that. And therefore, the H pattern that we're looking at in the IBB is right on the cusp of at 119, let's call it 120 of breaking the left side low in the daily chart of 119.31. And we've seen a lot of charts that have done this. And that's why I'm saying this is a very selective time and it's probably better if you're looking at specific stocks. They have to be leaders in their group. Otherwise, they are vulnerable. And as I'm looking at this, look, even as I'm talking, You've got the Dow 
There it is. You've, you've got the E-mini rallying. You've got the Dow rallying. The uh, E-mini finally has gone to D leg E. There's a leg E <coughs> in the a leg E in the one minute chart. Leg E in the ten minute chart. So after all the stuff over the weekend that you read, how negative everything is, and Federal Express this and Federal Express that, the market sometimes just tosses it off and says, "You know what? <laughs> I'm ready for I'm ready for a relief rally." And that's kind of what we've got right now. Is it more than that? Well, a lot of the work that I did over the weekend with a lot of charts suggests to me that there is a very oversold condition. One, <laughs> one that could produce a rally. Now, let's go back to the Dow just for a moment. Oh, so I want to say, so IBB, that's one thing. That's the big caps of, of the biotechs. The very many small caps, um, micro caps even, are showing complete independence. And that's kind of what you want to see in markets. I was looking at, I mentioned the other day, the DHT, and I did this on my overview yesterday, my video for my subscribers. <coughs> Gosh, this is not good. So, <coughs> DHT is up 36 cents, up 4% today, 907. What is it doing? It's doing the very leg D that I was talking about yesterday. In fact, I wanted to draw this in. I just I didn't do it, but I should have done it. This is a chap with falling axe, a little mini falling axe. Great pattern. And today it breaks out three bars. You remember my rule of 135? Sorry, 136. This is the third session, and yeah, we've got your leg D. So maybe it's done for now. Someone had mentioned NAT, which is a Nor uh, Nordic American tanker shipping. Um, yeah, this has got a same kind of move. Almost made a leg C today in the daily. It's up 8.5% eight, eight of 27 cents at $3.38. So. I individual things, and that's what I'd say to subscribers, maybe it's time now, just for the next uh, week or two, that we stick with my screamers, the very, very, <coughs> cough, cough, the very low price uh, stocks that um, uh, have a chance for a percentage gain, and you know exactly, you put your, your, your risk, risk on, usually 2% or 1.5%, and if you get it in a start to run, you just take it so we've got a break coming up. Dow's up 75. S&P's up 5. I like that. Nice turnaround. And a question's about that stock that I'm going to get to right now. Six starts here. Okay. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi everyone, we're back. Basil Chapman, Dow's up 118, S&P's up 10. <clears throat> so, there are a couple of things that I need to look at. Exxon was a question. Exxon, good candles today, up 22 cents at 93.43, but really not a good pattern at all in terms of the short term. Looking at Exxon Mobil, it looks to me like that 105.57 monthly high back in June at peak F could have an alternate count because I, everything that's everything suggests that the oil oil's not going away. So unless oil itself, crude oil, let me just give you a chart of crude oil so we put the things together here. Crude oil is trading at eighty four thirty nine. It's in the lower range. It hasn't been able to break above 95 for weeks. The way it looks at this particular point, it looks like it's going to pull back and then try to get back into the 85 area. And if that holds, we can go much higher. But it's also saying, wait a minute, there's a chance that we are in a, a worldwide recession that needs less oil. If that's the case, then ExxonMobil becomes a dividend stock and you can expect that it's going to retest the 80 level. It's at 93 right now. Let's say 85 level. Go one step at a time. So at this particular point, I'm inclined to say for a question came in uh, uh, Thursday, I think it was. I don't think I could answer it. Um, is Exxon a long-term buy and hold? And the answer is, about 17 years ago, 15, 17 years ago, I remember being at one of our workshops that we used to have in Florida. And uh, someone was talking to me about Exxon, and it just happened to coincide with someone who had taken a, a course of mine, I believe it was here in the Boston area, who had mentioned that they were given uh, by their parents' inheritance Exxon, and they've held it. And over the years, the question has always been, what should we do? And my answer always is, you could do one of two things. You could do either, just hold your Exxon, get the dividend, don't care about it, it can go anywhere. It's a major, major company. Yes, it might have to have changes because of the energy uh, situation, and it might have to take over a number of solar companies to still stay in business, but they have the wherewithal to do it. So that's one thing. The other is to say, hey, I'm going to hold the stock and I'm going to use the dividends to buy other stocks that I like. So that was the two, two choices that I had said. I don't know which one was the one that ever played out. But I don't feel any differently now. I think Exxon's a major company that have the money to do whatever they want if they really decide, okay, now uh, we're being impacted uh, very negatively uh, through the... Uh, through the production of oil, 
in the traditional way. Let's do the untraditional thing and we'll start becoming more solar impactful. I'm sure they're doing that at the moment, but I'm talking about talk, taking over companies. Then they remain viable. So I would just say that if, if it's a buy and hold, that's the attitude that you have to have. And you have to have the wherewithal, the, your own fortitude to say when it drops from when you buy, just to say 93, it drops to 83, that you're just going to hold. The idea is to just keep holding it. I don't know if, at least I don't try to do that for subscribers, but those are questions that people have. So um, that's that's one way to look at it. All right. Uh, the other is, so this was Exxon, the other, oh, I, my absolute best wishes, I hope everything's working out. You remember I had the call from uh, Bill, I think it was, so he was, Bill was talking about, where was it? Uh, let me just get you all that information. Uh, I wrote it down, and of course i got to find it now. I think it was, I think somewhere here, it must be Bill, it was Bill in San Juan. We were looking at, it wasn't ADTX, ADTX. Yeah, <laughs> pain, pain. So I don't know if he's even able to trade. And he had called me on Friday. I couldn't get to his call, and I'm so sorry about that. And what was his call? Let me just go there, see if I've still got it written down here. Um Yeah, I don't know if I've got it in front of me. I'll try to find it. <coughs> cough, cough. No, I don't have it. So he wanted to, he wanted to, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. You want to look at P-A-L-I. Well, I don't know if he's even able to trade. I mean, everything is down. There is nothing going, and there's just rain. So it's trading at 13 cents, and on Friday it was trading at 15 cents. And if I got to him, I was going to say, I wouldn't be touching this one right now. I know you had a great trade with the other, EDTX. This is different. I see nothing in it. And what is it called? Palisade Bio Inc. So this is in the biotech here. This is a micro cap. No, no, this is not a micro cap. <coughs> This is an infinitesimal micro cap at 13 cents. I just don't see anything in it. There must be a story there. If you know a story, that's different. But I, I can't do anything with that. But I just wanted to wish you everything. I wish you well. I hope everything's going fine. I hope that you do have electricity. If you do have water, you have everything you need in San Juan. All right, next thing I want to look at here is, here we go. Um, <coughs> this is, I, I wasn't doing this almost all weekend. Now suddenly I've got this scrap. They told me about it, that after you just start to feel well, so then another wave comes in after the COVID. Um, so, okay, so I did that, I did that, I did that. I don't want to lose concentration now. Um, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is still in that area. It's having a nice session today. I have 248 at 134. <clears throat> Made a low yesterday, well, on Friday in the 120s. This is a stock that's gone from the 349. <clears throat> Back in, all right, let's, let's, let's not have slowness here yeah, with my, my system as well. There it is. November, uh, 346.0. <coughs> this is ridiculous. Can't even speak. <coughs> okay. Um, on Friday, I was doing my best bass voice for the Messiah. <coughs> Today, nothing. So NVIDIA is up. So what's really important about NVIDIA, so this is leg E. <coughs> Can't finish the conversation. Yeah, I needed that. Thank you, Al. Here comes a break. I thought I had something to speak. I'll be back in a moment.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, Ron Basil Jaffin here. <laughs> Sorry for all the scratchiness. Um, I really thought that today would be a, a good day for the voice, but um, <clears throat> this is mistaken. Dollars are 55, SBs are four and a half. Let's do this. Remember, tomorrow, Larry Pizzavento, just uh, don't miss a uh, webinar. Try to get there. And try to get there early if you've never been to uh, using a new platform. So this will be very important. So we're looking at SMHs, the, S the semiconductors. A very nice session today up at $1.48 at 205.35. I say very nice session because it's a green candle, as had many green candles. But the pattern that we're looking at says in the arch formation, so far the technicals, that's the MACD and the stochastic, even the on balance volume, are a lot higher than they were back at the July low of 189.94. And that just suggests to me that you've got very clear parameters. A close under 189 in September, it will be very, very negative, both weekly and monthly. But if there is a rally, for some reason, going into the end of September towards the 233, 235 area, and it's really important because the semiconductors are part of the makeup, the internal characteristic of a market is made up with the strength and weakness of the semiconductors. That's, that's my interpretation. It has been for years and decades, in fact. So let's just watch this very closely. Uh, we need the semiconductors to continue to rally there at 205. Eh, big deal. They need to not just get the, that island reversal gap down 
uh, back around about the 13th or so of September. They need to be trading above the 222 level. This needs that will be fresh. That'll be say, hey, we've turned the corner just on the daily chart, not the weekly, but it'll help. So with that said, the Dow today, I see to subscribe to my opening call. A Dow holding better than a minus uh, 70s uh, after 1.30 this afternoon. That's a good sign short term. So I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call daily newsletter and safety. Thank you.